What's up Marvel Snappers? Welcome to another Math Breakdown. Today we are going to take a look at two cards that have a unique effect disrupting the opponent's deck. It's hard to see the impact that these cards have as you rarely see the result of their disruption, but let's take a look at some of the numbers to help us better evaluate them. Starting with Korg, this one energy card has the on reveal ability to shuffle a rock into the opponent's deck. Now rocks are mostly useless and when drawn take away a draw that could have been another card. There are niche circumstances where the opponent can take advantage of them, but they aren't very common. Patriot, Kazar, and Blue Marvel are just a few examples. Despite this, the card quality of rock compared to anything else they could have drawn is still advantageous for us. As they cost energy to play, you frequently won't know if the opponent actually drew it as they are unlikely to play it to the board. The earlier Korg is played, the more chances there are for the opponent to draw the rock. These numbers show the total odds of the opponent drawing the rock throughout a normal game based on the turn that Korg is played. Now this assumes that only one card is drawn each turn and no additional cards are added or removed from the opponent's deck. This does not include how America Chavez would impact these numbers either. America Chavez will actually provide a slight increase to the odds of the opponent drawing a rock on a future turn. Even with an ideal situation of Korg being played on turn 1, there's only a 55.6% chance of the opponent drawing the rock, and it continues to go down from there. Now should the opponent's deck get modified in size, there is extra potential of them drawing the rock, and we can look at a couple of popular examples of that. Drawing additional cards is rare in Marvel Snap, although a common way of changing the deck size is Jubilee. Jubilee pulls a card out of the player's deck which reduces their deck size by 1, increasing the odds of rock being drawn. This table shows the odds of opponents drawing rock throughout the game if Jubilee has been played on turn 4. This accounts for the deck being a typical size from turns 2 to 4, and then being one card smaller on turn 5 and 6. This also assumes Jubilee does not pull the rock on turn 4. Approximately a 5% increase in the rock being drawn throughout the game if the opponent plays Jubilee. If Korg is played before turn 4 or on turn 4 with priority, there is a 16.7% chance the Jubilee pulls the rock assuming it was not already drawn. Another popular card that causes the opponent to see extra cards throughout a game is Lockjaw, who swaps any card played to its location with another card from their deck. This does not reduce the total deck size like Jubilee, but does grant extra chances for the rock to be seen. Now the opponent could draw the rock and use it as swap fodder, but they still have the potential to swap back into it with a future card. Here we can take a look at the odds of the opponent drawing the rock or playing a card and swapping into it from their deck with a single swap on the given turn. Now this assumes Korg was played before turn 4 or with priority on turn 4. The column on the right is the combined probability of the rock affecting the opponent whether it's swapped into or drawn, and so Lockjaw actually drastically increases the chance that the rock from Korg is seen throughout the game. Now let's take a look at the bigger Korg, Rock Slide, who has the on reveal ability to shuffle two rocks into the opponent's deck. This is double the rocks, but as Rock Slide costs 4 energy, there are a lot less opportunity for the opponents to draw them. If played on turn 4, your opponent has a 52.4% chance to draw one of the rocks in the next two turns. It is incredibly unlikely, but 4.8% of the time they will actually draw both rocks, one on turn 5 and one on turn 6. If played on turn 5, there is a 33.3% chance that the final draw on turn 6 for the opponent is one of the rocks. As there will only be one draw remaining in a normal game, they cannot possibly draw both rocks. Now we can look at the Jubilee example again to see how Rock Slide affects this. If the opponent played Jubilee on turn 4 and you played Rock Slide on turn 4 as well, there is a 60% chance they draw a rock on turn 5 or turn 6, 
and to draw both rocks, the chance goes up to 6.7%. If played on turn 5, there is a 40% chance that their next draw is one of the rocks. Now, if you play Rock Slide on turn 4 with priority, should your opponent play Jubilee, there is a 28.6% chance that Jubilee actually pulls into one of the rocks, and this ends up being a much higher chance than with Korg. And lastly, we can take a look at the odds of the opponent drawing a rock or swapping into it with a single swap on a given turn with Lockjaw. For turn 4, we're assuming Rock Slide was played with priority, so the rocks are in the deck when the opponent goes to swap a card, and there's actually a 28.6% chance that they swap into the rock. Since Rock Slide was played on turn 4, there's a 0% chance of the opponent drawing the rock. But as the turns go up into 5 and 6, we get a far larger chance for the rock to end up coming into play. At the end of this video, I'll leave a link to a video of a deck I played that included both Korg and Rock Slide, and the Lockjaw interaction actually came up and ended up being a really fantastic game. Now for some final thoughts on these cards. I find them both really interesting, but unfortunately they are not reliable disruptors. You don't normally get to see the impact they have, but hopefully these numbers give you a better idea of the probabilities at work. Korg has less opportunity costs than Rock Slide, and is fairly equal in stats to most other 1 cost cards, but is likely outclassed by a card like Iceman, who has a more reliable chance of disrupting the opponent. Rock Slide is slightly understated for 4 cost cards and makes it a bit weaker. Rock Slide actually has quite a lot of potential to mess with Lockjaw, which is a fun interaction but generally he ends up being a weak turn 4 play, as the disruption it can provide is not guaranteed. That said, these cards can be a lot of fun, and there are several other factors that can improve their disruption potential. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything, or if you disagree with anything from this video, your feedback is always appreciated. If you have any other math-related ideas you would like to see explored, put those in the comments too. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been putting out Marvel Snap videos every day, and your engagement helps the channel grow. I'll see you in the next one.